Are you interested in obtaining Rwandan citizenship? Well, in this video, I'm going to share with you five ways you can get Rwandan citizenship. Okay? Twaji. Africa! Africa! First of all, why would anyone want Rwandan citizenship? Well, there are some pros and cons to it. Let's start with the negatives, the cons. Number one, you might lose your current nationality. If you apply and get granted Rwandan citizenship, your current country might make you choose just one, or you might lose your current nationality. Not all countries are generous nationality givers. But don't worry too much though, the vast majority of countries around the world allow dual nationality freely. They just differ in their rules and regulations. So make sure you check what applies for your country. Number two, if you have dual nationality and you commit a crime here in Rwanda, you'll be charged as a Rwandan. You cannot go claiming your other nationality in front of the judge. All right, now that we got that out of the way, let's look at the positives, the advantages of having a Rwandan citizenship. Number one, you can never lose it. Under the current nationality laws, it states that no one can deprive you of your Rwandan citizenship. Number two, dual citizenship is freely allowed. Rwanda is among the countries that allow dual nationality freely. Number three, with Rwandan citizenship, you can apply for an East African e-passport. This allows you to travel visa-free within these five East African countries. Burundi, Rwanda, Uganda, Kenya, and Tanzania. Number four, you get huge discounts on touristic activities such as vi visiting the wildlife park Akagera. Number five, your children are automatically entitled to Rwandan citizenship at birth. And lastly, and to me, the most important one, you get a deeper and legal connection to your roots, to Africa, to Rwanda. This is for my fellow Africans, my Rwandans, whose parents moved them to Europe or America in search for a better life there and to my African-Americans who were stolen from the continent. I was born in Rwanda, but grew up in the Netherlands, a country that has a history of killing, oppressing and colonizing people like me. I did not notice this when I was young, but it made me live the life of a victim and always in survival mode. I was always fighting an invisible racist system that was against me from day one, and all I wanted to do was just to fit in. I know now that this is the life for many black people out there living in countries of colonizers. Many of us black people really do need therapy. I'm even surprised how we are able to function in society. I lived in the Netherlands for 20 years, from year 10 to 30. But I learned early on that even if I lived there until my deathbed, I would never be treated as a full Dutch person. Even if we look at our African-American brothers and sisters who have been living in America for eight, nine, ten plus generations, they still get different treatment in front of the law from their other European-Americans living in the same country. So many black people feel trapped. Growing up in countries of colonizers is like growing up in a country of your great-great-uncle who robbed and raped your grandmother and her family to build that same house you grew up in. It's all f***ed up. Having a connection to Rwanda or to Africa in general through something as a legal citizenship gives me a sense of belonging that I've never felt before. It reminds me every day of where I'm from, where I'm going and who I am exactly. This has helped me tremendously in this adulting that we're trying to do. This is why I implore every black person, every African, every Rwandan out there to find some kind of strong connection that connects you to Africa, to Rwanda. It can be through legal citizenship, but also just by learning the language or buying a piece of land. Allow me to talk to my fellow Rwandans living abroad in my age bracket. Guys, we have been raised by traumatized parents. They did their best with the circumstances that they were given. The fact that you are still alive means that they have succeeded for the most part. It's now 2021. It is your time to continue on the Rwandan legacy. It is your time to define what it is to be Rwandan, wherever you are. Especially you who are popping babies left and right like it's no one's business. These kids are growing up looking at you as their main source of Rwandan identity. So make sure that you know who you are exactly. Alright, without further ado, let's get started with the video you guys came here for. Alright, let's sit down for this and get through this.
So, according to the uh, Rwandan Immigration Official website, there are five ways to gain Rwandan citizenship. One is by territory, by origin, by marriage, by recovery, and by naturalization. As you can see, the website does not provide much information at uh, every point, just an application form. I'll try to explain each point with more details, especially for point number five, the naturalization, which is the most practical one that will apply to most of the people out there watching. If you are someone who is seriously wanting a Rwandan citizenship or you are in the process of obtaining one, or you just need the specific information pertaining to your case, I will gladly help. Just book a consultation with me, uh, link below, and we can go through it um, together. Okay, let's start here. The first one, you can obtain Rwandan citizenship by being born on Rwandan territory. If you are born in Rwanda to non-Rwandans who have lawful residence, you are entitled to apply for citizenship when you reach the age of 18. Until then, you just have the citizenship of your parents. Also, any child that is found on Rwandan territory is assumed to be Rwandan. Thus, this entitles that child also to apply for citizenship when he or she reaches 18. Number two. The second way to gain citizenship is through your parents. A person born to Rwandan parents gets Rwandan nationality at birth. Both the mother or the father can transmit their nationality to the child. If you don't have any living parents, but you can prove that you are of Rwandan origin, you are also entitled to apply for Rwandan citizenship. Okay, number three. You can get citizenship by marriage. A non-Rwandan citizen may acquire Rwandan nationality through a lawful marriage to a Rwandan spouse. It is important to know that under the current Rwandan laws, only a civil monogamous marriage between men and women contracted before the relevant public officials is recognized as an official marriage. So no gay marriages. Also, you must be married for at least five years with your spouse and living together. The living together part is quite vague how you can prove that but like most things in Rwanda um, when things are vague you can either use them in your advantage or they can work against you so good luck mm -hmm. all right number four you can gain citizenship by recovery of your Rwandan nationality so there was a, a period in Rwandan history where Rwandan fugitives lost their nationality. In 1959, as the Belgian colonizers were gearing up to leave Rwanda, there was a lot of violence happening in Rwanda. As a result, around 400,000 Rwandans fled the country in neighboring countries and they sought out asylum and some of them got citizenship. The then ruling government enacted a law which stated that uh, any Rwandan outside of Rwanda who gets a second nationality will automatically lose their initial Rwandan nationality. This law was erased in 1994. They also added, Rwandans who are deprived of their Rwandan nationality between January 1959 and December 1994 because of their acquisition of foreign nationalities autom automatically reacquire Rwandan nationality if they return to settle in Rwanda. And all persons originating from Rwanda and their descendants shall, upon their request, be entitled to Rwandan nationality. So if you're one of those people who lost their citizenship during that period of time, you can also apply now. If you're not lucky to be born from Rwandan parents or on Rwandan territorium, or you're not able to find a Rwandan spouse to marry for five years, there's still hope. Through naturalization, basically anyone who fulfills these requirements can gain Rwandan citizenship. There are six ways you can gain Rwandan citizenship through naturalization. I'll go through them ranking from hard or least likely to easy or most likely at the end. All right, number one, through honor. This can only be done by the president. Like most countries, head of states have the power to grant nationality to an individual. Of course, you must have done something honorable, like this guy in France who saved a baby from a balcony. So if you ever do something very honorable, make sure to post it online and tag the president. He is very active on Twitter and Instagram. Who knows? Number two, national interest. The cabinet has the power to grant citizenship to someone they deem of national interest, an asset to the country. This can be anyone 
from a head fund manager to a military soldier. Number three, through substantial and sustainable investment or activities in Rwanda. This is also known as citizen by investment. If a foreigner has evidence of substantial and sustainable investment or activities in Rwanda, he or she can seek citizenship through naturalizations. Details or exact amount are not given, so it will be up to you to prove how substantial or sustainable your activities are in Rwanda. Good luck! Number four, high skill or talent. If you are a highly skilled person, like a surgeon or artist, or, a, or you have a specialized skill that Rwandans can use here in Rwanda, you can seek citizenship through naturalization. There's no fixed list of skills that will automatically grant you citizenship, so again, it will be up to you to prove uh, how this skill is valid or useful here in Rwanda. If you can, you, can, you have grounds to apply for citizenship based on your skill or talent. Alright, so we're now at number five, second last. Number five, you can get Rwandan citizenship if you are an immigrant living in Rwanda for 25 plus years. Anyone who doesn't have legal residency, like a refugee, but they have been residing in Rwanda for 25 years, is also allowed to apply for citizenship. And lastly, and which is I think the easiest one of them all, uh, is through uh, legal residency in Rwanda. Anyone who has legal residency and has been living in Rwanda for 15 years or more can seek citizenship through naturalization. You must be predominantly living in Rwanda. Again, the details of how that is measured is not given. So if you can prove it through your own way, you have a bigger chance. All right, I have a bonus one for the people who stuck around until the end. But this one is for the people only who are under 18. If you're under 18 and you want to gain Rwanda citizenship, have a Rwandan legally adopt you. This way, you gain automatically, automatically citizenship through them. Thank me later. If you want to apply for Rwandan, Rwandan citizenship, please go to the Rwandan immigration website. They have all the relevant forms there. If you want more information pertaining to your specific situation or you just need help with the application, you can always book a consultation with me or link below. We can go through it together. Don't forget to subscribe and uh, give this video a like. Support me on Patreon where I'll continue this conversation or any other topics that I put out on YouTube right here. Thank you to my current supporters and fans. I would like to see you all in the next video. Muramuche.